Tonight, Victoria Stilwell confronts a jealous dog whose attitude toward visitors is terrifying. I'm very frightened of him now. And his possessive behaviour is literally pushing his owners apart. Get down! Victoria must get the owners to control their dog before the unthinkable happens. Today I've seen a dog that is jealous and aggressive. And given half a chance, this dog will attack. Yes. Meet Neil, Kelly and their dog, Jed. Neil is in the Navy and bought Jed for his fiance, thinking he'd make a nice cuddly guard dog for her while he was away at sea. He's a very big part of my life when Neil's away. He's um, my boy. <laughs> Jed is an American bulldog, bred to protect and famously loyal. But the bond between owner and pet has grown so strong that Jed now thinks he's the man of the house. And when Neil comes home, Jed has some very strict house rules. There'll be no kissing, no cuddling on the sofa, and definitely no hot loving in the sack. Jed, enough. Down. Jed does ruin my sex life. Come on outside. But it's the role of protector that Jed takes most seriously. To Neil and Kelly, he's their lovable pet. But to any visitor coming to the house, he's frightening. I get stressed big time. One minute he's fine, next minute, whatever clicks in his head. He just goes on defense mode. He lunges forward and snaps. Jed's now so aggressive that even Neil's mum and dad dread coming round. We are concerned about the dog because we don't want to walk in there and the dog bite us. Jed! This aggressive outburst is the final straw for Neil's mum. I just feel as though the, the dog's ripping the family apart and it makes me very sad. To test how serious Jed's aggression really is, in a controlled situation, two visitors put on protective bite suits and enter the house. Jed is wary of the visitors, and as soon as there's any contact with Kelly, he attacks. Jed! Let go! Release Jed! Jed! It's a rude awakening for Kelly and Neil. The protection is now starting to get to aggression. Someone's going to get hurt. I am afraid that Jed will really bite somebody because I know that if that happens, then he'll just be taken away from me. It would, it would destroy me, so... Neil and Kelly now realise they must do something before it's too late. <laughs> to help this couple take control of their marauding mutt, Dog expert Victoria Stilwell will certainly have her work cut out. Letting a dog get away with aggressive behaviour is inexcusable, and the longer you do nothing about it, the worse things will become. To assess the situation, Victoria will spend a day observing Jed's behaviour. Concerned by his recent outburst, Kelly and Neil decide a muzzle is in order. Okay. Does he always greet people like this? Yes, every time. Yes, every people time. he doesn't know. Right. He's, he's like this every right. time people come through the door. Yes, I can see he's quite tense. Okay. Well, somehow we're going to make our way into the sitting room. All right, so why don't you go ahead yep. of me? The further Victoria goes into the house, the more angry Jed becomes. Jed. Victoria's used to working with aggressive dogs and diffuses the situation with a special verbal technique. Thank you. Enough. Thank you. Oh, I don't look at me. Uh, I, 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 thank you. Oh, I know. Jed is obviously incredibly uncomfortable and very unhappy when strangers come into the room. And this is going to be a very, very tough nut to crack. Jed's aggression is one thing inside the house, 
but how bad is he in public? Being approached by a strange dog could often provoke even a mild-mannered mutt to attack. But surprisingly, Jed turns tail and scarpers. That's what he does with any kind of dog. It's amazing outside. Jed is even frightened by a small collie. That encounter with the other dog uh, was a very good sign because there was the other dog coming up to him going rah, 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 rah. and instead of him going into that other dog and having a fight, he just backs away and runs away. Victoria's made a breakthrough in her observation. In open spaces where he can run away, he's absolutely fine. But when he's inside the house and there's nowhere to run, that's when he'll turn to aggressive display to protect himself. Victoria has seen enough. She believes that the responsibility for an aggressive dog like Jed lies with the owners. She sits Neil and Kelly down to give it to them straight. Bottom line is you do have an aggressive dog. And when an aggressive dog is aggressive, they're an aggressive dog for life. And one day when he does bite, really bite severely, you know, it might be the fact that you have no choice about what happens to him and the awful scenario of him being taken away and put down. Keep him away from children at all times. Um, if you have any kids coming around here, he's away. You have to realise that dogs that do have an aggressive response are under severe stress. So when you work with an aggressive dog, it's not make him face up to it. It's trying hard, very slowly, to minimise the stresses that your dog goes through. You never give that dog the chance to aggress again in any situation. And that means you have to take the lead. You have to be 100% consistent. The hardest thing um, to hear with Victoria talking about Jed's behaviour was her saying that he's aggressive and he'll always be aggressive. Realising they must take responsibility, Neil and Kelly are ready to begin training. We're going to start to hopefully rehabilitate him and it will be a learning curve for me and, and Kelly and Jed mainly and hopefully he'll, he'll take to it and, and stick to it. I think Kelly and Neil are finally beginning to understand how serious Jed's aggression is and now that they do we can start making headway. If your dog ever shows signs of aggression, Victoria believes you must get it checked out by a vet. Behaviour like Jed's could stem from a medical condition. We're bringing Jed to the vet because I think it's really important that he gets a full checkup, full medical checkup. But I also want him to have a, a thyroid test just to check that everything's going okay. Hi. If aggression is caused by a medical condition, it's important that no training near members of the public is carried out before the test results come back. So while they wait, Victoria's going to begin with some jealousy training. Come on. Up until now, Jed's been getting in between his owners at every opportunity. Hey, Jed! If they can resolve his jealousy, it may reduce some of the aggression. The dynamic between the three of you is that Jed's very much in between you. And I think Jed demands a vast amount of attention. And you give it to him. You especially in yeah, the culprit. Yeah, yeah. It's true, it's true. It you are true. so guilty of that. When we let him through, just let him through, and then sit together on the sofa, put your arms around Kelly. If he clambers up on you, all I want you to do is to stand up. It's time Jed learned who's boss. OK, so if you're going to sit next to Kelly and put your arm around... OK, now you stand up. That's it. Don't say anything to him. We don't need to turn our backs, no? Just stand no, no, up. no, just stand up. That's it. By standing up and ignoring him, Jed will soon learn that his jealous behaviour will get no attention. Even looking is attention. Only when he backs off and allows Neil and Kelly to relax yeah. will he be praised. Good boy. That's it. Attention is on your terms. Good Affection boy. is on your terms. The jealousy training went well. He sort of got the message. And uh, I think that's it's one thing, if you're going to stick to it and say if you want your face licked by him. But um, no, it's, it was really good, well, didn't yeah. it? He did well. 
This training is really important because for the first time, Kelly and Neil are giving Jed attention on their own terms. And they can use this everywhere around the house, at the front door, on the sofa and in the bedroom. Concerned about the cause of his hostility, Victoria's had him checked out by a vet. The outcome of the blood tests is critical for Victoria to determine the best way of getting control. We've got the lab results back and it's shown that he is um, low thyroid, which means that uh, he is suffering from hypothyroidism. Dogs that have low thyroid function can sometimes feel um, anxiety or aggressive, and so by putting him on medication, this will make him a little bit calmer. It's a good boy, it's time for your medication. Jed That's might it. have to be on thyroid medicine for the rest of his life to help control his anxiety levels. When his health issues under control, training can begin. The most important thing that we have to do here is tackle Jed's aggression towards people that he feels unsure about. Um, and the way we do this is not to tell him off for it, not to force him to be in a room with somebody he feels uncomfortable with. We have to change his perception so that he sees people coming into your house as a good thing and not a bad thing. Jed is much more relaxed when he's out and about. Victoria believes that meeting visitors outside first will help him settle more quickly. Just say hello, hello. and let's walk. Good. I want Jed to see people coming through the door as something really good rather than something that he should fear. And gradually, we're going to build this dog's confidence up to the point where he can relax when somebody comes into his house. Because of his aggression, Victoria insists Jed wears a muzzle in public. Once he's familiar with a stranger, they can risk coming inside. But the last visitors here were Neil's parents, and that ended in tears. <laughs> Kelly and Neil must remember, once an aggressive dog, always an aggressive dog. Key to preventing an attack is to recognize the signs and manage the dog's stress. So as soon as Jed shows signs of aggression, oh, what a good boy. Oh, he's distracted what a good with some boy. treats. Oh, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun having somebody over here, isn't it? Put it down. When he begins to relax, Put the visitor gives him some Just tasty down. treats hidden in a plastic toy. All right, so he sees you. And go, if you go sit back down, take his muzzle off. Now, hopefully, Jed will see the guest as a friend and not a threat. Because of Jed's temperament, he must be kept on a lead whenever visitors are around and continually distracted until he completely calms down. Get the toy and really oh, yeah. just... Yeah. Oh, yes. What's this toy? That's it. Good. Yes, it is. After ten minutes, Jed's become so calm that he even plays happily next to his new best friend. If they're careful, Kelly and Neil can do this with every visitor. But if Jed doesn't calm down when distracted, he must be placed out of harm's way behind a baby gate where he can settle safely, still in the presence of his owners. I was quite a skeptic, to be honest. I didn't think it would work. But I've seen it for myself and it's, it has worked. Neil and Kelly have done really well with this training because it is, it's hard. But one thing they must not do is be complacent. You must never, never forget that you have an aggressive dog and that that dog could turn at any time if those stress levels are reached. So they have to have 100% management um, in order to ensure that the dog is safe, they're safe and the people around them are safe. You never know when you're going to come into contact with an aggressive dog, so it's important you recognize the signs. Growling, a hunched back, baring of the teeth and rapid barking are all signs of a potential attack. Mr. Big is a calm, passive dog, but I'm going to show you what not to do if you are confronted by an aggressive dog. First of all, you should never scream, make sudden movements, eye contact, or run away. So what should you do? If you suspect a dog might be aggressive, turn sideways, fold your arms, look away, and be still. When the dog loses interest, walk away calmly. What if the worst should happen? If a dog does attack you, get onto the ground, roll up into a ball, with your arms protecting your head. 
Remember, stay alert around dogs at all times. Come on, Jack. In Portsmouth, training has been going well, and Neil and Kelly are seeing improvements with their aggressive dog, Jed. But the time has come for Victoria to leave them to practice on their own. Before she goes, some words of warning. What you are working with is extreme. And so you have to be extremely careful that you don't go too fast, you don't put pressure on him, and that you minimize his stresses so that he never has a chance to aggress again. OK? With Victoria gone and Neil off to sea again, it's up to Kelly to work on Jed's training alone. Not an easy job. See you later. Bye. American bulldogs like Jed are known for their strength in body and in mind. They were originally used as guard dogs. They're extremely loyal and are known to fight to the death to protect owners and their property. So Jed here is certainly living up to his breed's reputation. In Portsmouth, while Neil is away at sea, Kelly's getting stuck into training Jed alone. Victoria's routine of introducing visitors outside before bringing them into the house is working well, and Kelly's able to have friends round every day. There's a good boy. And with every person who comes by, Jed becomes less aggressive and more confident. You're coping very well, aren't you? Two weeks later, and Victoria's back to see if Kelly's been sticking with the training and check if Jed's mood has improved. Hello, Jed. Hello, my darling. It's been going very well. I've noticed a big difference in his behaviour, certainly towards people coming into the house. As long as I go through the routine and stick to that 100%, then he's really, really good. Good. So it's very pleasing. <laughs> Today, Neil is coming home from sea. He's used to being greeted by a possessive pooch who tries to push him and Kelly apart. So, can they now be reunited without Jed forcing his paws between them? Hello. Hi, yeah. Hi. So far, so good. But Jed's aggressive behaviour has been tearing family life apart. The last time Neil's mum and dad came round to visit, it ended with mum in tears. Now, with Jed temporarily out of the way, they're back to see if relations can be restored. Tell me how you feel when you come into this house. Quite frightened, actually. Right. So uh, I'm a bit apprehensive about what's going to happen today. So we just say hello. We're going to go. Now for the moment of truth. <laughs> Having first met Jed outside, can Mum come into the house without fear of attack? Now what Kelly's doing is she's working him. With Mum sitting comfortably, Jed is given a treat to show there's no threat. There you go. Done. Now Jed is relaxed, his muzzle can be removed. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. And he's boy. focusing more on that than he is on you. He knows you're here, yeah. but a dog that is not relaxed can't eat. So the fact that you're here, and he's fine with your presence. He's concentrating on that as opposed to me. Exactly. At last, the family can enjoy spending time together. Victoria's training, along with the thyroid medication, has made for a much calmer, happier Jed. How did you feel about that? Good positive results compared to last time, without a doubt. I must admit, I wasn't looking forward to it, but it was fine. Can't stop smiling about uh, his progress because it's been so good. We're a lot happier. Mm. I am. I, well, I am, to be honest, because it's, I'm not flaming yeah. worrying about if he's going to bite someone. Kelly and Neil finally realise that this aggression has to be taken seriously. If they're going to keep a dog like him who is nervous, they're going to have to work very hard to rehabilitate him. And they're going to have to make sure that they manage him and the environment that he is in 100% of the time. No ifs or ands or buts, that's what they have to do. But I think there's a good future ahead of them.